All right, we are recording. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. I have again with me Kaylee. What's up, Kaylee? Say hi. 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 <laughs> and um, we are talking about doing a podcast together, making it a weekly occurrence. So we figured why not just get together and start recording instead of talking about it too much. We'll just start recording and then uh, mm -hmm. see what happens. So that's kind of sure. what this is. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really excited because um, there's been some crazy things going on. I mean, it's been nonstop craziness, like, this whole year, right, you know? Yeah, I know. First, we I had mean, World War Three with Iran, with the U.S., and then there was uh, COVID, then murder hornets, then riots, now second wave. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Dust storm, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the second wave already. Shit. I think I missed the memo for that one. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it, so is it going on? You're getting the second wave stuff there down in uh, Melbourne? Melbourne? It's really, Australia. it's really weird because, um, good eye, mate. No, because like, <laughs> it's not like a second wave that's affecting the whole of the state of Victoria or the whole of Australia. It's like the suburbs. Like, I woke up one morning and it was on the news. Like overnight, there's been a spike in um in um COVID. Uh, victims literally overnight you know I'm not exaggerating about that in certain suburbs in Victoria so there's about six suburbs that have been affected um so I was just like I just don't really understand that it's weird what were they doing in those uh places with the spikes what kind of measures were they taking oh uh, they're still doing it like luckily my suburb isn't but it's right next to ones that are so they just they've got these uh, COVID squad teams and they're like doing door to door, knocking on people's houses. They've got like testing vans at the bottom of people's street. They, they go to schools. And I actually read somewhere that they're thinking about testing kids in nether regions. And I'm not even joking about that. Yeah, they're going to test kids' buttholes. For, for wait, for their temperature or for COVID? I think it's for COVID. I, I, look, I can't remember the specific details. I just read something like that and I was like, um, please let this be a joke. <laughs> you can't just read something like that and leave us hanging, Kaylee. That's crazy. Do, do you still have the article? Uh, I actually, actually don't know because it was on Facebook oh, and then I just deleted it. Facebook. It. Yeah, well, no. I'll have you look for it later. If you can find it, we'll, I'll put the post, but it's not a big deal. That's still hilarious though. I mean, weren't you telling me though that they were... Um, they had curfews that they put in place and they were going into people's houses or was that just like a rumor? No, like the, the, not, the main curfews, it was just, um, apparently, uh, they wanted, they wanted to enter and successfully did enter some people's houses because those people obviously didn't know their rights. And, um, you know, they wanted to the, do the COVID test and things like that. I mean, it was just random knocking doors at all. So weird. It, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. But a lot of people who know their rights have just said, I'm not even going to entertain that. They're not getting in my house. I'm not even going to open the door to them. I'm one of those people that said that. <laughs> so the people who haven't and didn't open their door and stood firm are okay for the most part? As far as I'm aware, I don't know yeah. anyone personally who's done that. But yeah, I, I think it's, I've not heard anything in the news or anything like that, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And you said you saw helicopters too flying around? Oh my God. So in my suburb, um, and a lot of people wrote it on um, Facebook as well, in, in the past, the suburb of Pasco Vale Facebook page. I know it sounds really sad, but it's a legit thing. <laughs> um, we were all saying how we can hear helicopters in, in this suburb and like the neighboring suburbs. And they're going on till fucking 4 a.m. in the morning. Like, I take the cat out into the garden to play at night time, as you know. <laughs> and um, I can hear them all the way up from midnight till four in the freaking morning, just doing the rounds. It's weird. Yeah. That's, I, so actually that's, saw, that's, I actually uh, saw one helicopter in my friend's suburb, which is the neighboring one to this. Me and my son saw this helicopter flying over us. It had no lights on. And it was flying really, no, really low with no lights on. And me and my son were like, why hasn't that got any lights on? Like that's freaking dangerous and weird. Yeah, it's crazy. We have a thing that people, it's like, um, 
I don't know if it's proven or not, but a conspiracy theory called the black helicopters that's been around forever. Say like the CIA black helicopters are quiet and all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, I that's just creepy. If why would they need helicopters during a pandemic? You know, it's it's just it's it's creepy. Even if it's yeah, just I... to freak people out, it's like, hey, let's fly helicopters over, and you know, it's like they have money in the budget. Let's do it. That's nuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah. It's just... So what's been your experience um, recently with the masks and the mask wearing and all that where you are? Is it mandatory? No, it's not. They're talking about um, making it like an advisory thing, you know, so that people do it. Um, but it's not been mandatory yet. Although in England, apparently it is mandatory on public transport and on airplanes to wear the mask. Have you heard of... Um what exactly is going on because i mean you have family and stuff there so has anyone do they have medical exemptions have they tried to not wear the masks are they giving out fines are they arresting people um well speaking of fines apparently they're going to do that in uh in melbourne if you don't wear a mask in those certain areas they're going to fine you one thousand six hundred dollars in england i've not heard anything about fines um but yeah, it, it, it could it could be a thing. I'm not too sure. So in Melbourne, in the places in the suburbs that they lock you down, there's a sixteen hundred dollar. Now is that sixteen hundred Australian? Yeah, yeah. I guess it doesn't matter, but still, that's still it's pretty close. I mean, that's still a lot of insane amount of money. That's crazy. yeah, I know, I know. I think like I just try and not pay attention too much to the news because it really just does my head in, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of what we also wanted to talk about the uh, on this first episode or, you know, was is the news and also other shows, you know, on YouTube or out there, maybe do truth or shows or just uh, people reporting stuff. It seems that a lot of it's just this fear porn that they're just pushing mm. all this fear and you're going to see, obviously you see it in the mainstream media, a hundred percent. That's that's basically like their job <laughs> but yeah. um i feel like there's things that maybe that the mainstream media can't report on or doesn't report on and that other people do report on you see it in youtube and you see it all over these other platforms where people are reporting on stuff but they don't really give you any solutions they're just mm. telling you about all this doom and gloom and that's something i noticed over this whole lockdown or whatever you want to call it with this uh Kiruna you. Um, so I, I feel that, you know, it was really more about control and all that. But, uh, you know, the people, there's certain people that I was following. And all, after a while, I just felt like every day I was like, the word, they're going to come get us and, and we got to hide and we got, what are we going to do? And, you know, after a while, I'm just like, all right, I can't yeah. do this anymore. I agree 100%. I was feeling the same way. That's why I got rid of Facebook now. But also, I explained to you the other day my controversial you know, thinking out of the box offends a lot of people as well. And I'd rather just do things like that with this with you rather than post on Facebook. But yeah, there's a lot of people that are saying things that are scary, you know, and it makes you feel worse, even as a truther, yeah? Like with the food shortage thing, remember we were talking about that? And I was like really freaking out about it. Yeah. About I mean, look, it could, it could still happen. I'm just saying, I just... Um, I didn't want to keep seeing or hearing about it all the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because it's just, it's kind of like, um, you know, if you just, it's like if you build it, they will come or he will come. If, if you keep thinking about something and you get it into the zeitgeist, into the culture, and people start to think about it and think about it and dream about it and have nightmares about it, eventually it'll start to manifest itself. It just comes mm. in basically on autopilot. 100% we were, we were talking about the, that the other day weren't we like a manifestation a creation of, of these things and um, if enough people think it, it it will come true yeah like yeah it's it, because it, it, they get used to the idea and comfort is the ultimate you know people would rather have they'd rather be comfortable than hear the truth it seems in my experience anyway so oh, when people are introduced to an idea at first, they might recoil from it. But if they hear it a bunch of times, then they start to become comfortable with it. So I think it's part of that, too. It's, it's really just about how things are created on this plane of existence that we live in, whatever it is. Mm. You know, people, um, 
they create every day when they wake up, whatever you're doing, you're creating. So a lot of times, you know, I talk about this a lot in my work, people don't realize that. And so if you don't realize that, that means you're creating for somebody else. And, I and if you're not creating it happening. instantly right now, you might create it maybe in a few months, a year down the line. It's, it's not always instant, is it? If you know people think it, it still could happen at any point, even if it doesn't happen tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And the more people that, the more people, so this is the thing. So there are people that if you agree that there's a system of control in place called government, which is, you know, here for their benefit, not ours. Right. And not a lot of people are at that step, but some people get to that step and then they're like, wow. And it's kind of like awakening. People call it red pill. You know, you're like Neo in the matrix and you can see everything. Um, and then you just go on this quest for knowledge and truth. And you're like, oh my God. And you start to see the control system. But the thing is you can get bogged down in it. You could see it all the time. You could study it. You know, you could start to look at the cage and, and study like the specifications of the cage that you're in and, and uh, you know, who are the masters and how we can do And that's another cage. You're stuck in that hey. whole prison because re what you're doing is you just start to manifest, like we were saying, you manifest also, but you're not doing anything to create positively in the world. You're still creating on their, in their loop. You know, that's why I love, I think it was like Rick and Morty where they have an episode where Rick and Morty are stuck inside this reality, but they don't realize it, but they kind of do. And they keep getting stuck inside it. And it's like, they think they're out and then they're still in it. And I feel that's the way it is with this truth. You're like, ah, hey, I'm here. Look at all this stuff. And you look around and you're like, oh my God, Bill Gates. Oh my God. You know, oh my God, Agenda 2030 and the the, uh, the new world order is coming to get me and the Illuminati and the Freemasons and all the symbols. And, you know, and then, well, then you, you look up into the sky and you're like, Elon Musk's getting to work, isn't he? Shit now, I can see all these satellites now and all the 5G things going to start beaming down. Like, you know what I mean? Like, all the all the chemtrails and you, you look you know what I mean like even yeah. looking at the skies is a problem <laughs> and what are you not doing you're not you're not you know starting a family you're not um, starting community you're not having fun you're not enjoying yourself you're not doing mm. what you're put here to do you're not on your path and that's at the end of the day that's all that matters you know if you're not on your path it doesn't matter what the distraction is it's you know it, that's what I found anyway not to be judgmental for anybody but that's just how i found it yeah i completely get you like people react differently i mean there's even people who think that running away is the answer and can help them as well um, and look i've thought about doing that too or oh, let, let's just like fuck off to the countryside or something like that but then i'm thinking you know i'm just escape jumping out of one prison cell into another form of prison cell you know what i mean yeah, I mean, I, I think you have a valid point there, but do you think there is a point where one should get the hell out? Because I'm starting to see everybody wear a mask and I'm starting to actually get, mm. now it's like it went, it's not everywhere. And if I go into a grocery store, no one says anything, but it, the restaurant thing is really where people are like losing their minds. You know, like I, I just went into order like a burrito somewhere and they're like, you got, you know, the guy's like giving me a hard time and all this stuff. And then, um, it doesn't make any sense though. And I, I know they don't believe it because he's like, Oh, I'll call my district manager for you. So he calls the district manager, he's talking to her on the phone. And then he hands me the phone that he was just talking on. I'm like, are we in a pandemic? And you just handed me a <laughs> phone, but, and I got to wear a mat. So I know <clears throat> it's just about control. But the thing is, it seems people are buckling to this control, you know, and, and people will say, well, you know, just wear it, be nice, go along, don't hurt people's feelings. And I'll say, okay, that's a good intention. But you know what else? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. So and not only that, matter. it's like, why it's don't you just go and get vaccinated then just to keep everyone happy, and keep the peace. You know what I mean? Where's it, yeah. Where does that end? Where does it end? The, yeah, that's happy? exactly. That's the other thing. You're right. That's it. It never, if you give in, it never ends. Exactly. Um, but the first thing is like, listen, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It doesn't matter what your intent is, it's what your action is. You know, if somebody's smacking you in the head with a baseball bat, you don't care what their intent is. You want them to stop hitting you in the head with a bat. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Maybe they think that you're baby Hitler and they're on drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like they think they're doing good in their mind. So, and then you're right. If you don't say no then it's just going to be this. And then it's going to be the next thing. And I had this analogy where I, I heard it from Owen Benjamin was saying it uh, as a comedian. I watch his live stream. And he was saying how, if you're a woman, like think about a woman who wants to date a guy. 
So she's talking to this guy and every time this gentleman calls her and says, hey, come over, let's have sex or let's hook up or whatever. And she, she likes him so much that she just does everything he says. He's never going to want to date her, but then he'll meet a woman say, and then she, he's like, hey, come over. And she goes, no, you know, you'll take me out on dates. And then he's like, he starts to really like her. And then he has respect for her. And then maybe he'll make her his wife someday or date her. And it's the same thing. It's because she said no. She took a stand. And that's what you have to do. No is the is the. And it changes your whole energy too as well when you do that. I mean, you go from being weak and vulnerable to having a sort of strong energy and self-respect and self-love. You know what I mean? Like either way, if you date in someone and you say no to the one night stand or the friends with benefits situation you can instantly change your energy it's the same now if you take a stand and say no in your general life with a lot of things that you don't want to do then you're changing the energy and if everybody did that the whole world's energy would change for the better you know what i mean yeah i definitely agree because you you're taking back your power you're putting yourself mm. in control by saying no you say listen I draw the line at my body. Okay. You could, guys can do what you want. You can wear your own masks. You could, you know, you could take as much hand sanitizer as you can humanly stand and, and just bathe in all day if you want and just kill yourself. Cause that's what you're doing. But yeah, you no. do if you want, that's fine. You believe, listen, people believe fairy tales. They don't want to look into it for themselves. I can't, I can't help them that this is, you reap what you sow. You know, you yeah. play, silly games you're gonna win silly prizes so that's fine but you can't let tell somebody else to do that and that's where it gets to me and it brings me back to my point is so here it's getting a little crazier a little bit um maybe not so crazy but do you think there is a point where hey it's like maybe we should move to an area where people aren't so crazy about the masks or whatever it is you know or do you should you stay in your area until it gets so crazy that you become piggy from Lord of the Flies, and then you throw a rock on your head for trying to talk wisdom, you know? Like I, you I get what you're saying. Look, if I had the money and the support network to go and live out in the countryside, I would do it, you know, in Harvey. I'd do it tomorrow. But the fact is, I don't have the money now to do that, and I don't have the network and support out there. So I just think, why should I have to do that? Why, why should I have to leave things that... You know, why should I have to leave a suburb that I'm happy with and I've got friends around me and, you know, like and my son can just walk to the store and, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like why should we have to do that? Like, and I feel as though it's kind of running away and we should stay and fight even if it's a bit dangerous for us. You know what I'm saying? But, but that could be just me because I'm stuck. You know, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, you're just dealing with your situation, but how are the people there? Are they getting crazy with the mask and stuff? Like, is every, when you go in a store, because I go in a store and I'm not wearing a mask, but I went to a store today. Everybody else was wearing a mask. I was the only person not wearing a mask. Some people had it down around their chin and whatever, but everybody had a mask out, you know, it was in a grocery store. Really? Probably about 30, 40 people. I was the only one there, and I'm just looking at people smiling and I'm laughing and I'm, you know, I, and I'm, I'm very grateful. Because I have all the fresh air and it's so I'm so grateful to all of them for breathing in all their own toxins and keeping it to themselves. Like it's, it is really a grateful <laughs> blessing and I'm not being sarcastic. I look at it like, yes, it's hilarious, but I'm even not being sarcastic. I try to look at it as a blessing because if not, I'm going to be like, these people are crazy and I got, I'll have to run I see away. what you're saying. You know, but yeah, it's, it is. It's like, wow. And they just, uh, you know, it's the same thing that made me really despise sports because, like, everybody was on board. And er I, I, as I got older, I started to see that everybody had to fit in place with their thing and their stuff, and they had to have, and they had to know all the names and the jargon and the stats. But yet, mm. you know, they're not talking about what's really going on. You know, they're letting the world slide to hell. Whatever. No judgments here. But it, I see the same thing with the masks. Like, everyone has their little own mask, and it's, like, personalized, and it's – but, it, I, I, you know, I don't know. So how is it there? And I'm just going off on a tangent. So how is it there, though, with the mask? Are they complying? No, it's fine. I, actually, I was going to remind you about when you went to the, the beach and people wore a face mask. Uh, didn't you, Was that you that said that? You went for a stroll along the river and, or the beach and someone, people were wearing face masks? And it's like the whole point of getting down there is to get some fresh air, man, you know? like mm -hmm. Was it you that said that or was that somebody else no, that told no, me that I, story? Yeah, I did. I, I saw him when I was driving by. Um, I was on a boat yesterday on a beach, but it was in a river, like on this island, and nobody there. There's over a couple hundred people. Nobody there had masks. That was nice to see. But mm. when I'm on land, you know, I think it's just because 
they have like they're on a boat and they feel like rebels you know but like where are they in their grocery store when i don't have my mask they're like <laughs> it's, there's, it's a law there's a sign you know like i have a friend i'm going to do a podcast with and i actually got to say something i keep reminding but i'm going to say this to him it's like every time we walk in he's a comedian he's fucking hilarious but every time we walk in somewhere he wears a mask and i don't but he, he'll point to the sign that says you have to wear a mask and i'm like yeah dude, it's like yeah no i see the sign bro like, it's not like i'm an idiot i know that i I know that I look like I'm not paying attention, but that's part of it all. You know, like if somebody, you know, it's part of my drunken master or whatever, you know, like you will underestimate me, please, because that is my advantage, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's like, no, I, I know what the sign says, you know, but, but again, if the sign said I had to wear a gold star, you know, if the sign said round up all the, you know, would you do it? It's like, it's a sign. You don't got to follow the sign. Oh, yeah. Well, just you wait until... Next next week, fish will have COVID and the ocean and the sea will have COVID. So you'll have to wear a face mask on the boat. You know, that, that'll be the thing next week. <laughs> um, round here, though, actually, people aren't that bad. I've seen a few extreme things that look like, you know, Hannibal Lecter. I mean, he basically had a metal uh, bloody thing on his face. And you know what I mean? I was like, that's the most extreme face mask I've ever seen. I was in the grocery store and even this woman looked at me with her child and we both looked at each other as if to say, are, are you, are you, so yeah, that, that, that's weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was fucking extreme. Like I, I think it was like a respirator, a full on respirator. <laughs> um, but look, it's not actually that bad around here, but my suburb's pretty quiet and I, I know I'm, half hour drive away from the main city of Melbourne, thankfully. Um, so, I mean, and I, and I don't go into the city either because there's no reason to at the moment. Um, so it's it's not as extreme as where you are, I don't think, no. Yeah, and I, I talked to somebody um, who was just out in South Carolina. I live in Connecticut, for those listening. Connecticut, United States. About an hour from New York City, and somebody who's down in South Carolina, and they said that you know they're at their restaurants, they were everywhere, nobody had masks. They're like, yo, they were living like it was 2019, and I'm like, that sounds like a place I would love to move to, you know. So this is the thing. I'm still gonna stand here and stick around and and do my thing, but I am still gonna be conscious of everything going on. And I think if it gets to a certain point, I would have no problem saying, you know what, it's time for me to get the fuck out of here because. I, I, I'm just the kind of person, maybe I have to work on myself. Maybe it's a flaw, but I'm just the kind of person who can't keep my mouth shut, you know? Like, I'm in a place... Oh, I, no, I'm the same. I'm exactly the same. Don't worry I, about I it. I went paddleboarding with a friend of mine, and I met him, and he was talking to somebody else that he knew. There was this girl there that at the beach he knew, and he was talking to her when I showed up, and they started talking about COVID, and I was like, uh, you know, I was like in one of these moods, like, you know what? I'm just going for it, and I was like, I let him have it. Uh, not him, he gets it, but... I, I wasn't mean, but I'm just, I wasn't holding back, you know? And then I'm trying to think exactly what was said, but um, there was, she was saying something like, Oh, do you know anybody that died? And she's like, Oh, I know people that died. I'm like, yeah, people die every day. I was just like, you know, I don't know. I know. Yeah. But you know what, when you say that to people are like, yeah, but those things aren't as contagious as COVID. That's always the answer. I know suicide is not contagious. Well, oh, you know what I mean? That's the the real, yeah, that's the real epidemic right now. It's the opioids. It's the suicide. I just know somebody who, you know, I was with somebody and they got a call that their a, a family member just killed themselves. 27 year old guy. You know what I'm saying? So mm. this is, these are the real fallouts of what's going on. It's not going to exactly. be ever reported on or it's not going to be blamed because it, these are things that you can't, it's not a direct thing. It's not like there was a lockdown and someone said, oh, there's a lockdown, I'm going to go get rid of it. It's no, it's all these, these effects. And then it happens. If somebody has an opioid addiction or is suicidal, this is just going to ramp it up even more. 100%. The, you know, and, and it's, this is, obviously we're preaching to the choir here. Maybe, I don't know, maybe someone's listening who doesn't understand this, but, you know, I feel that there's terrain theory, you know, so I don't even think these viruses are, you know, I believe that everything we were told are, are like children's stories. And I think they were told that because we were raised to be adult children. We weren't raised to be adults. And when I get mm. around another person who's an adult, it's amazing to me. And I'm like, oh, wow, you actually worried about working on yourself. And you're not, you know, I was talking to somebody, a couple of people yesterday. And this uh, person I know, she is a child psychologist, I guess, or she studied that. And I just, I was, I broke down a couple things. You know, I, um, about the COVID thing, I actually said that whole analogy about dating somebody, you know, or a guy and a girl, and if you know, if you keep, and they they, they kind of got it. 
And later I was just talking about how I was working on myself and saying all these things that she was just like, wow, that's so, so interesting that you've been doing all that. I'm like, yeah, it, it is. But it's like fucking, this is shit everybody should be doing. You know, we are a nation uh, or maybe even a, a whole planet of mostly grown children, you know, mm. like, and what this is isn't a judgment, yeah. you know, because I was there too. I was just yeah, fortunate same. enough to, to do the work and to get there and uh, to go on my path. But, you know, so. Mm. I mean, I even, um, you know, I've tried to talk to, um, you know, taxi drivers about it, you know, and I've spoken to a friend and I said, look, if you think about the psychology of the government, they have the same behavioral traits as a sociopath or a narcissist. And he was like, um, what do you mean? I was like, domination, control, rules, you know, I'll give you this, but I want that in return. You know what I mean? I was like, if you just look at it, it, it is sociopathy on a freaking large scale. You know what I'm saying? The whole psychology and treating us like children who need rules and boundaries and, um, you know, we're animals that need keeping in order, you know, like that's what I was saying. But then I was also in a taxi and sometimes I sit there and I think instead of sitting on my phone and playing Bejeweled, which is what I want to do, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and I do often do that. But I was sat there on my phone and I thought, you know what, Matt, I'm not going to play Bejeweled. I'm going to actually try and, um, you know, have a conversation with people about COVID. So, I, you know, I tried to get him into it and I was like, what do you think about this whole COVID stuff then? You know, just testing the waters. Um, and then I was like, but don't you think it's like a huge mind game? And he's like, no, no, absolutely. I, I don't. People are dying. I'm like, yeah, but people are dying from suicide because of COVID and things like that. I said, I don't know one person in England who's died from COVID. I don't know one person in Australia who's died from COVID. And I said, it's a lot worse in England. And I don't know one person. And all my family and friends are over there. I don't know anyone. And he went... But I think you're just turning a blind eye to it when you talk about suicide. And I went, you know, I'm going to go back on Bejeweled. Thank you. Where, where, are, we, where are we there? <laughs> I just went back on Bejeweled and I thought, I can't deal with it. <laughs> I mean, like... Yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. And I, I try to empathize as much as I can because there's this concept I've been, I came across lately. Um, I heard from this guy, James True. He's really, really great. Check him out on YouTube. James True. And he talks about Aperture. And it's all about, it's like photography. If you look at different cameras, you can get all kinds of different lenses. You get like fisheye lens, wide angle, you know, you could do a zoom, whatever. And everybody has a way they view the world and there's a different aperture that everybody has. So some people aren't ready for that. So because of the aperture they possess, you know, this, this cab driver, if he has to admit that his whole world is going to fall down around him. So he's going with the comfort you know the the comfortable mm. narrative the 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 one that he's familiar with so he goes with it he it's what the news tells him um and he's able to accept the lies in society because he's probably lying to himself about something you know and it's i think that's like again no judgments i was doing this this is how i know because i've done mm. this work i was lying to myself now that i'm not it's so easy for me to see the lies in society, just like it's easier for me to see the lies at a poker table, you know, like I'm so much more tuned in to things. And, uh, you know, I was telling somebody this just uh, today, I was talking about some stuff and I was like, you know, it's not like I just watched one video. It was like, oh my God, everything's a conspiracy. I'm like, no, no, there's, mm. there's layers to this stuff and it's just about truth discovery. And there's a huge rabbit hole with this stuff too. I mean, it's way deeper than you think at first. And, and, and still, it's even deeper than what I think now. And I've been into this stuff for five or six years, you know? Yeah, that's, um, that's part of it too. It's part about like stopping going down rabbit holes because you could just go until you go crazy. And it's, it's about getting to know yourself and then mm, becoming that yeah. warrior or whatever it is because then you can encounter it. And then you're able to... Yeah, I think one of the big keys is also to... Um, hold your point that you're going to say that I feel bad I cut you off but um, that you're you have to be able to hold an idea in your mind that you might not agree with but just hold it in your mind and try it out you know like is abortion moral let's see and think about it think about doing it and how you feel and then think about not wanting to do it you know whatever it is I just said abortion because that's something that you know whatever it is a religion an ideology a law you know think both sides and feel it through, you know, and that's what I do. And I even convince myself sometimes that I feel a way about something, even if I don't, and then I go back and I'm like, no, that, that didn't feel right. But I really sometimes do. I'll go to, and then I'll wake up in the morning. I'm like, I don't think that do I, you know what I mean? But 
<laughs> it, it's interesting though because you really start to feel both sides and I think that's the key because if you can empathize with somebody um you know I, that's you, you know you could defeat an enemy you could you could hurt somebody but if you can empathize with somebody I think that's probably the hardest thing to do you make me think of a um, Gollum from Lord of the Rings you know how Frodo can empathize with Gollum you can see that he has good in him and he trusts him for, for a bit, you know, but then Sam just sees horrible betrayal. You know what I mean? Like, that, I just yeah, have to throw the ring. that's <laughs> what allowed Frodo in, in the ring to be destroyed because even Gandalf said to him, he still might have some part to play, you know, like, and, and Gandalf says, don't be so light dealing out death because Frodo does say, maybe we should just kill him. Maybe we should just kill Gollum. And Gandalf is like, you know, don't deal out death so lightly. You're... He, you're not the creator. It's not up to you. He might have another part in the story to play, and he does at the end. He's key to the ring getting destroyed. And I was just thinking about that recently because, you know, it, that you could get angry at these people with masks or whatever it is that you don't agree with, and you, it just gets you so upset and frustrated. And, um, you know, or somebody's going to fight with you, and you just want to rage and fight back. But, it, you know, and you're just like, let's destroy them. But you got to remember that there's a reason for everything that's going on. And that's their personal struggle that they have to deal with, you know? Well, we talked about this the other day, actually, weren't we? You know, a couple of days ago when I um, I messaged you and I said I'm a bit upset, actually, because of uh, people uh, are, are being like, I, I don't know what you would say. Well, they were just being sort of um, mean and bitchy about my Facebook post, remember? And you said to me, you have to remember that they're not being mean because they're mean. They're being mean... mean because they just don't understand um, your views right now. You said that, didn't you? Yeah, that, that's the whole concept. They don't understand where you're seeing it from. You have a different mm. viewpoint. You know, I'm tall, I'm six foot four. I see the world differently than most people. <laughs> I could say, hey, something's gonna fall. And they, I don't see it, but no, no, look it. Trust me, I see it. You know, there's a spider web ahead of you. From my angle, I could see the sun glistening off it. You can't, watch out, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. And I'm five foot two. Spiders don't <laughs> yeah. exist. What are you, a spider theorist? <laughs> I'm five foot two, and I could just be like, "Oh, your shoelace is undone." I'm like, what? I can't see anything. That's because you're so tall, and I'm so small, and I can see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have everybody has their own unique uh, perspective, and I think that's what's great about this world. That's what we need to focus on. I think focusing on our differences as strengths instead of our differences as weaknesses is. Um, is much more better you know and let's mm. celebrate our individuality everybody wants to get in together in groups and say yes black lives matter or it's all lives or it's white people or it's mexicans or it's you know it's irishmen or no it's individuals man like who cares about anything yeah. else you know yeah you mm. might be black and sexy that's great but like what do you what do you like to watch and what do you read and i don't know mm. it, that's what it's all about because and it's funny because you see these you'll see people who are trying to discredit like all the black lives matter which i get it you know that a lot of that stuff is just political and they're using people it's it's you know um but then they'll have a black person on to talk about it and i i get it it's because it looks like it makes it but it's just like you're playing and it. it's like it, it's he's just a person still even though he's black yeah, he might not like black lives matter but it shouldn't matter that he's black but it, yet it, it's so weird man i can't even mm. i don't know it's like <laughs> i think that's, that's a psychology point. though isn't it it's a psychology yeah. thing again that's how you know it's not consistent because you it's just you know all you gotta do is take things out to their logical conclusion and you're like well that doesn't make sense mm. you're saying you're telling me i can't say a word because of the color of my skin isn't that <laughs> but then again look they had Greta Thunberg on a panel for black lives matter the other day and i looked at that and i thought what <laughs> what does she fucking know <laughs> i thought that was a joke they really did I thought they did. It's, was that a joke? I don't know. I thought it was just a meme, but I didn't see the... No, I think it was real. Oh, my God. I, w I mean, I wouldn't doubt it at this point. That's hilarious. Oh, no. How dare you? How dare you, Kaylee? How dare you mock her? She is a strong young woman who's trying to voice opinions of rich white men. <laughs> Not even white. I'd say it. Just powerful. It doesn't matter what fucking color people are, man. Listen, there's white people that are horrible and in control. There's black, there's whatever. There's all, there's probably lizards and shit. No, um, but yeah, it's so crazy. Um, yeah, I, I get it too, because in this country, the police, 
But it, the thing is, it's just anybody in power. And then when you start to just say it's only against one thing or the other, that you change the focus and you just you split, you, know, you no longer have a unified front. Instead of saying, hey, let's look at the police and the way that they treat regular citizens, mm. they treat them all like maniacs. They shoot and kill not all police and not all people, but, I, you know, we're going to, hey, listen, the saying goes, one bad apple spoils the bunch. It's not, oh, we only have a few bad apples. It goes, no, one bad apple spoils the bunch. And that's how it works. And I also think that the way the police is structured, whether it was intentionally or not, whenever you put people in control of other people, this is just what happens. They've done plenty of experiments about with mm. it. So you can't even really blame the people. Yes, they're doing the uh, actions. So I guess we could blame them. But, you know, I, I can empathize with them is what I'm saying. I see how they fall into it, even though I was tempted with that power because I was an MP for a few months and I was like, this is fucking crazy. I got I got kicked out early. I'm like proud of that. Um, <laughs> going back to the well, even, even those, uh, sorry, I caught you up then. Even, no, no, though, um, even those roles attract a certain personality type too, though. And that's also, um, you know, an issue with, with police and government is that, uh, if you're a narcissist or a sociopath or, you know, even if you've got, um, you know, secondary sociopathy, even if you weren't born that way, you would still look and think, hmm, power, control and dominion over all other beings. I think I'll, I think I'll go for that. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do, 100%. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it's great you said that because what no one else is talking about is, yes, there are a lot of people who want to do good in society so they join the police thinking they're going to make a difference and then what happens is they get mixed in with these fucking psychopaths so there's these good well-meaning people who are together with these psychopaths and the good well-meaning people will probably project their goodness onto these psychopaths and they must say well if they're doing it, it's got to be right and then you know once you get that power plug in there you know yeah. so that's really yeah. what's going on so yeah there are some good people in there but you and it's not there that well, they're the ones that, you know, somebody said that like one time, I, you know, I think it was like my mom. She's like, you should be a cop. And I'm like, have we met? <laughs> what? <laughs> and then she's like, yeah, but, you know, you could change because you were a Marine and all that stuff. And then you could change, you know, you could be one of the good ones. It's like, be one of the good ones? Have you ever seen a movie? <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you can't change. These institutions aren't broken, man. They're working exactly how they're supposed to, you know? Like, you can't, yeah, you yeah, spot on. All you're doing is you're just going to, yeah. So, um. And it's not just that actually um we were we were saying because i i was in the royal air force for like three months i'm proud of the fact that i didn't last there as well actually just like you're proud of the fact you, <laughs> you were mp for so long but um you know i realized and they realized that it just wasn't working it never will work and it was never supposed to work <laughs> i was told i didn't have any military bearing and at the time it upset me and i'm like that was probably the best thing they could have said to me well, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you right now. Like, I joined and signed up to the Air Force for selfish reasons, purely selfish reasons. I was, I was you know, 24 years old and, you know, still, still quite young. And I, I looked at the military as something fun. I could travel the world. I could get a, um, you know, discount on my council rates. I could get uniform paid for. I can get cheap housing. I can get my driver's license. I can get education. You know, and I thought, I'm going to do all that because that all sounds fun. I'll do it. You know, it wasn't about me helping my queen and country. It wasn't. And I'm going to be straight up honest about that. And a lot of people aren't that honest. Some people are, though. I mean, all you can do is read Reddit and you'll find a lot of honest comments. I've found them, you know. A lot of people admit that they were selfish and went into the military for selfish reasons. So even when people say, oh, they're doing it for queen and country, you know, in England, for example, I know you don't have a queen there, but it's like, no, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> you know, that's what's sold to you. That's not necessarily always the case. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why you, what your reasons were, but you know, they, they were my reasons. I, I had some of those same reasons, but I was into it because I kind of believed in it you know like I knew so I knew what it was going to be like and I knew it was going to be really hard but I prepared myself for it and I just played along and I played the game you know people are like how did you make it into the Marine Corps well it's not like I believed that I knew what the training was and I knew it was a game so I was like all right challenge accepted and I just played along and I you know sailed through it I mean it was it, yeah it was hard it was tough but I made it through there's a couple spots like when I first got there I couldn't climb the rope I was like really scared 
but then it's just because I wasn't, I didn't figure out how to do it right. And once I got the technique, I was like right up the rope. Um, mm -hmm. But everything else I was able to do and it was just, you know, I knew it, but once I got in really, and I was disenfranchised because then I really realized that it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't, didn't find out all that I know now when I was in, you know, I still thought I didn't realize the horror show that the United States was doing and how wrong we really were, but it wasn't in the nineties. It wasn't as bad. It's not like it was now, but we were still doing some pretty bad things, but I didn't mm -hmm. see that then. I just saw that it was a joke that it doesn't, you know, they don't care about people and that it, it's any thing of like, Oh, it's the Marine Corps and we take care of our own. No, that's, I mean, maybe on an individual level with my other people I was in there with, but like, the higher up still will burn you in a fucking second. They don't care. And once I saw that, I was just like, ugh, you know, and then but you're yeah. just doing menial labor most of the time, you know, like, so it's, it's not even I that fun, it. is it? I, I mean, it wasn't even as fun. I mean, I spoke to people who had passed the two lots of training and um, were doing the actual trade and they were just like, I'm, I'm fucking bored. Like I'm sat in the office. I was supposed to be out on helicopters, climbing rung ladders and dropping off into the fucking ocean and shit. And, I'm sorry you're doing admin. You know, like, so it doesn't even work out the way that you imagine or they, the way they sell it to you on the adverts. It's not even always like that, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the, those advertisements. That's a, little, a bunch of BS. I fell for a little bit of that, but I did see so did I. I went a bunch of places and I did do a bunch of things. So that was, I did, and I got a good experience out of it. I mean, I got to travel, mm -hmm. but I went in in the 90s, so it was much different. But um, I yeah, for I think sure it played was, the game. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it was maybe, uh, oh, I can't remember, 2000. Oh, look, I'm too old to remember. <laughs> but um, it, it, was, it was about maybe seven years ago or something like that, maybe more. Um, but look, I, I actually even, one of the corporals who was training us, he said the same thing about being screwed over. He was supposed to, he's been in for 21, 21 years, and after 22 years, you get your pension. Well, guess what happened at uh, 21 years? They decided they're going to let staff go. And he was one of them that they were going to let go. So he spent all of his time uh, serving the military to get his pension. And he signed up for that amount of time. And they absolutely royally screwed him over. And he didn't even get his pension because they let him go. I mean, that is like saying, you've done what we wanted. You don't mean shit. We don't care anymore. Thank you. Fuck off. See you later, you know? Yeah, yeah, they they were even cutting pensions down when I was in. It was like thirty five percent or something. But people that were in before, they, everyone thinks, oh, if you do twenty, you could retire. It's like, uh, so I I did four, and I was like, that's enough. Yeah, <laughs> don't blame you. <laughs> that's enough for me. But um, I think now you got to sign up for six minimum, six years minimum in England now with the army. I think. I think it's six. I could be. I could be wrong about that. It, but yeah, it's just a horror show. I would not want to be in. You know, any of these, especially the wars the United States is involved in. They keep saying they're going to pull out, and they keep pretending. But it's you know, I believe it when I see it. I don't care what everyone's like. Oh, he said. I'm like, yeah, he said. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. He, oh, you know, he, I'll give you. I'll give you a hundred bucks uh, next week if you know. Do <laughs> you give me a hundred bucks right now? No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Well, I think we just about chatted for like an hour uh so i think that's a pretty pretty good amount of time is there anything else that you wanted to kind of talk about or say um before no not really oh I, I actually did want to um when we talk about the face masks before yes. why why is it that you're so opposed to is it it's not just because of um it being a symbol of submission it, it's also because isn't it um something to do with um breathing in your own co2 is actually yeah. more harmful yeah well i mean we're, we're supposed to we're obviously supposed to breathe oxygen and when you cover your face like that you breathe in and you're not able to recycle out your co2 you know so you just breathe in all your carbon dioxide back in and which results in you getting less oxygen and I mean, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist, but that can't be good for you. And I've art, I've mm. looked at a bunch of articles and I've seen other doctors and stuff talk about it and say how it's not bad. You can get headaches. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can get, uh, all kinds of bad effects from it. And there's other people trying to debunk it. But I mean, I, I don't know. I just, it's the whole control thing. It's the whole, I need to just breathe air. I know that my whole life I've been breathing air and I'm fine. 
why should I cover my mouth? Especially when I know that it's not what they're saying it is. By any if I, yeah, a hundred percent. And it's kind of like saying, cover your mouth, don't say anything, just do as you're freaking told. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, that's what I mean. So even, even if it's, there's no negative medical effects, which I know there must be, that's, but that's the thing. I think it's a multifaceted thing and they just have different, oh, you know, oh, this, oh, you're just being, a, oh, you're not going to want to go along. It's like, no, I, I, yeah, I don't want to cover my face. Like, I don't understand why it, it's still, it, it, it's like I, a muzzle. Do you think it's like a muzzle? It's like wearing a freaking muzzle, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all that. That's the thing. And I really don't yeah. understand people have such a hard time. I mean, I, I really, I guess it's just, they believe that they are helping people and that, but this is the thing. It's the people who know and they're smart enough to realize that this virus isn't a threat. And I, I mean, like I said, I'm into this whole, you know, terrain theory. Viruses are probably just fucking make believe again. But whatever. Even if, yeah, you this official yeah, narrative, yeah. even if you look at the official narrative from the CDC here in the United States, they said the majority of the death was in nursing homes. And there's plenty of evidence where they were stuffing people into nursing homes. Even after they tested positive, whatever, they were shipping them to nursing homes, leaving them also putting a lot of people on ventilators. People go on ventilators, they don't come off of them normally, especially when they're not allowed to be surrounded by family or friends because it's better to talk to somebody to keep motivated. What people don't understand is when you're on a ventilator, you know, when you breathe every day, every second, every minute of your life, your diaphragm is used to that. And it's a, a muscle that's under your lungs and it expands and it contracts and it's always being worked. When you're on a ventilator, that ventilator is doing that for you and that diaphragm then becomes weak because it's so used to being used all the time. So people die when they get put on ventilators and you know, there's all these factors. So um, if you look at it, if you just look at it for two seconds, honestly, and you could look at the facts, then you will know that wearing masks, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's not, this thing isn't the threat, the masks aren't helping, it's just about control. So if you could see that, and you still wear a mask, those are the people that I'm going after. If you think this is real, you're not even listening to this right now. You're, you already thought I'm crazy. You're like, oh, Brandon went nuts. But if you're somebody who likes me and you get along, you're like, yeah, you know, I don't, I think this is some BS. Maybe, you know, maybe you still believe in viruses. Fine. I don't care. I don't, whatever. That's your thing. We're not, we don't have to have a discussion. I, you know, you have kids and you, not you, but people are listening. You probably have a life and you have time to devote like I did and talk to all these doctors and see evidence and all this crazy stuff. And, and I could be wrong, but if you're somebody who believes that this isn't as bad as it is and you're just wearing a virus, so I'm sorry, you're just wearing a mask. Just wearing, so, a virus. <laughs> wearing a virus. <laughs> wearing a virus on your face. Uh, if you're just wearing a mask to make people feel better. Yeah. Then stop. Take it off. You don't need to. There's medical exemptions. If you have a medical condition, you don't have mm. to wear a mask. They can't ask you what your condition is. Take it off. It, it's important. I look at yeah, even if, even if, like, look, I've got a child and I haven't been having enough time, you know, to talk to doctors and do, but it's all about intuition too. You can have as many scientists and doctors in the world tell you something, but how does that information feel? What's your intuition say about that? Does it feel a bit off? Does it feel a bit strange? Does it feel like there's more to the story? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, my intuition was telling me there's something weird about this whole, do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Even, it, it, go ahead, go ahead. No, you keep talking. No, I'm just saying, like, it, it, I'm like that with a lot of things. I'm like that with a lot of things. My intuition screams at me. You know, it doesn't matter what the topic is. It doesn't matter how, how many facts and mathematical equations someone gives to me and tells me I should listen because these are the facts and the scientific mathematic thing. I sit there and I think, mm -mm, it doesn't feel too right. I don't know what it is, and I can't explain that to you, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it, it's kind of like that in poker. And, you know, people say to me, oh, you can probably tell when someone's bluffing or you, and you can read somebody. But it's like, it's that's not really how it works. Sometimes, yes, you can catch a tell. Somebody will like shake their foot or, you know, there's like a wink or, you know. But most times mm -hmm. it's because of the body language. And I can't explain it. It's just, it's like a, an unconscious uh, yeah. process that happens. You just read someone's body language in that same way there's a lot of things that aren't consistent, you know, like, so if I'm playing po somebody in poker, I'm like, their, their body language isn't consistent with what they're doing. And it hasn't been throughout this entire hand. Like my mm. brain realizes this in the same way, my brain realizes what's going on. It doesn't feel right. And so that's why I look at these things. Mm. Then you also ask yourself questions like, you know, if, if, if you really think a virus is that big of a threat to humanity, how would we have made it this far guys? You know, like, Oh my we God, just invented hand sanitizer not that long ago, like 30, 20, you know, we would have all been dead by now. Come on, man. Like, come on. 
you know. We've lived through worse bloody things as well. I mean, we had a bubonic plague in England and we're still alive, aren't we? We still survived. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, so, yeah, but um, like I said, it's only going to be the people who are on the edges or, you know, are already know of this. But if you are one of these people who are just wearing a mask to get along, just don't do it, man. And let me tell you, yeah. I'll tell you this. I know, I don't know if it's going to be, <laughs> oh shit i got it oh no bless you um, oh no no <laughs> shit <laughs> i don't know if i don't know if it's going to be somebody same experience but i kind of feel i don't know there's something about being the only person without a mask on in the store you're like wow um especially when you see through this and you're not afraid you're like all these other people are doing this because of <laughs> excuse me because of fear so um, sure you don't want to get that mask out brandon oh, i think it's not that you do <laughs> i know i know <laughs> <laughs> and uh no it's just dusty um yeah and i can tell you it's a great feeling to be like especially if you believe it like i mean if you don't believe and you know this is all just some bs and i should know because my initials are bs i'm a good bs detector all righty any any uh all right well what do you think go ahead i'll let you i'll let you have the final word on this <laughs> I don't really have any more to say about it. Um, we, I think we've pretty much covered everything that um, we, we, we've been talking about and thinking about and wanting to to record and say, so yeah. Yeah, it feels like we hit and talked about everything. I just wanted to make sure there was nothing else. All right, cool. Well, everybody, if you enjoyed the show, uh, you can support us. Go to morelawsmoreproblems.com. That is the website where I put up all the work. So um, thank you guys once again for listening and supporting the show. And uh, if you have any questions for us, you can also contact me more laws, more problems.com or put the comments under this video or podcast or wherever you find it and let us know. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions about what we talked about. And remember everybody, just don't wear a mask. They can't make you do it. They, they can't. It's like I said, if you believe and you know, this is some crap, don't wear a mask. You know, if you're one of these mm. people who thinks it's real, whatever, do what you do, do what you want to do, go bathe and, Go bathe in toxic chemicals called hand sanitizer that are way worse for you than any so-called virus. But anyway, all right, guys, thanks a lot, and uh, take care. Bye.